Let me say good afternoon to you all and welcome to the uh, waterfront. Uh, we are delighted to be here on the uh, shores of the Anacostia uh, to continue to highlight uh, our work um, on making the, uh, the river a fishable and swimmable uh, place and today to sign new legislation um, that will continue to move us towards being a, uh, a healthy and green and uh, livable, uh, the most healthy, green, livable city uh, in the U.S. I want to thank Council Members Bonds and Barry uh, for joining us uh, today, uh, both of whom I know uh, appreciate the importance of being able to clean up the river, uh, which just takes us another step in that direction. I also want to thank the um, Anacostia uh, Community Boathouse Association for permitting us to use this location uh, for uh, this event uh, today. Um, I don't know how many of you knew uh, that this boathouse is one of the largest uh, community boathouses in the nation. How many of you knew that? How many of you all are telling the truth? <laughs> It is, and that's yet another, uh, you know, plus for us here in the city. Um, this act, this boathouse has actually introduced thousands of our children uh, and adults uh, to the joy of rowing and paddling, and uh, it's nice to see that we have, uh, you know, a number of crews that work out down here. I did not know until um, recently that Gonzaga High School is the uh, is the national champion uh, in AIDS, right? That's what I was told. Yeah. I got it. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that is uh, phenomenal. Now we got, we got Anacostia High School, which I think has a crew uh, also. Uh, we got to get our, uh, our public charter schools and our traditional public schools doing that as well and create a competition all across the uh, city. Um, I want to commend the uh, Anacostia Community Association for the great work uh, that they're doing uh, here in the city. I also want to acknowledge uh, our director of the uh, Department of the Environment, uh, Keith Anderson. Uh, also, I want to thank Ellen McCarthy and Brian Hanlon uh, for the work that they've done in their respective areas of playing uh, key roles uh, in helping to move forward our sustainability efforts uh, here in the city. Um, Today, I'm signing the Sustainable D.C. Act of 2014, and I, I want to thank the council for uh, supporting this effort. Uh, you know, we have, I think, one of the most aggressive uh, sustainability plans uh, in the nation, uh, but to really make it as effective as we possibly can, we've got to continue to have enabling uh, legislation to be able to move forward with uh, effectuating the principles that are uh, contained in the uh, plan. Uh, the bill today that we're signing will allow us to advance uh, energy efficiency in the district, will allow us to uh, ensure healthier living for our residents, provide affordable transportation, uh, make uh, environmental education more accessible for our youth, which is one of the most important aspects uh, of the sustainable uh, D.C. plan, and of course, obviously, will protect the natural environment uh, here in the District of Columbia. Uh, specifically, the bill will improve uh, our groundbreaking program to report energy and water consumption uh, in large buildings by requiring uh, public utilities to provide electronic and aggregated data uh, for energy reporting. Everybody knew that already, didn't you? I bet you did. <laughs> uh, the bill will also clarify existing language to make it easier for new building owners to report uh, building benchmarking data in a timely manner. Um, I want to thank PEPCO, I want to thank Washington Gas, uh, and the Institute for Market Information, Transformation, excuse me, for uh, their support in developing this legislation. Uh, it also will enhance our radon program. Uh, any person conducting radon-related work in the district will be properly certified by the uh, EPA and also by our uh, district government, specifically our Department of the Environment. Uh, the bill will also expand access to transportation. Uh, the district is, uh, I think, clearly the destination of choice uh, for residency, for people from all over the world. I'm sure everybody knows by now that we're adding net about 1,200 people uh, a month, 
And uh, we've been using the uh, figure uh, 647,000 for about a year now. But the reality is we're probably at 660,000 uh, people at this stage, which is the largest population we've had uh, in about 30 years uh, in the District of Columbia, if not longer. Uh, with this growth, uh, we must ensure improved public transportation uh, to avoid traffic congestion uh, and air uh, pollution. The bill will require employers in the district uh, with more than 20 employees to give uh, employees access to the uh, IRS allowed uh, pre-tax transit uh, deduction, employer provided transit subsidies, uh, or em employer provided uh, van pools. Uh, to uh, enhance uh, environmental education for our youth. The bill will expand the environmental literacy program and natural resources uh, education. Uh, research uh, <clears throat> has shown that children with access to the natural environment lead healthier lives, show an appreciation for nature, and will most likely become stewards uh, of the environment. Uh, the bill also revises our approach to uh, speeding the growth of our urban tree canopy uh, for those who have followed the sustainability plan, we have made a commitment uh, to uh, increase the uh, tree canopy in the city over this 20-year horizon from 35 to 40 percent. In specific numbers, that means we would be increasing the number of trees annually on an average of about 8,500 to 9,000 trees um, a year, which is uh, quite a, uh, quite a uh, challenge, to say the least. Um, also, we will require a new regulatory scheme for urban beekeeping to encourage responsible maintenance of beehives that can uh, produce. <laughs> I'm so glad that we could provide that kind of incitement, excitement in your life. <laughs> I, wish I, were, I wish our deputy mayor were here because he's a beekeeper. Uh, yeah, Jeff Miller. Is that right? Uh, he, our former... Uh, Planning Director uh, Harriet Tregoni, who I understand has learned all about beekeeping from Jeff Miller, who is our Deputy Mayor. Um, I don't know. You can tell me later why you want to keep bees. I really, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> beekeeping certification. Are you certified? <laughs> certified? <laughs> all right. Are you certified? Yes. Good for you. All right. How many certified beekeepers are there in the District of Columbia? <laughs> you don't know? It gives, it gives new meaning to a sting operation, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't help it, guys. I can't help it. <laughs> This bill also, and this is really a, a uh, I guess, a headline for this legislation. The bill also uh, imposes a ban on polystyrene, which most people call styrofoam. <laughs> uh, and the date for that is uh, January 1, 2016. Uh, it means restaurants, carryouts, food trucks, and other places that serve food will be required to use compostable um, or recyclable food service uh, products. Um, the um, styrofoam is especially <clears throat> problematic because it is not compostable. And when it gets into our rivers and gets into our streams, uh, it decomposes and, um, and then is uh, eaten in many instances by the fish and other organisms, which then obviously impose a, uh, a threat on uh, human uh, health. So to ensure a fishable and swimmable Anacostia River, which is a, part of, uh, a big part of our uh, effort here, uh, we're removing styrofoam pollution, uh, and so this ban is uh, obviously a critically important uh, milestone. Um, now, the bill will prevent uh, new pollutants from flowing into the district's waterways, uh, and as a result, I'm pleased to report that we're already hard at work uh, cleaning up the pollution already in the river. Uh, many of you know I'm a native Washingtonian, and I know firsthand uh, that this river was once a place for actually people to swim in and people fished in and enjoyed the natural resources. And unfortunately, over the last several decades, uh, the Anacostia River has become heavily polluted um, with harmful chemicals, nutrients, uh, and trash. As a result, uh, our residents 
are uh, advi advised against swimming and or consuming, certainly consuming the fish uh, from the river because of the high level of uh, pollution. Um, while there have been many attempts to improve the condition of the Anacostia River in the past, I actually am very encouraged uh, by the efforts uh, to date uh, because this is the first time in history that the district government is taking the lead to assess and then remove toxic pollution uh, from the river. Um, this afternoon, we are officially kicking off the, and I quote, uh, for a cleaner Anacostia River uh, initiative. And that is a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure, seriously, and there are a lot of people here who, who recognize that. Uh, what, what one of the things this initiative will do is to um, help us identify the sources of contaminants, contaminants in the riverbed. And I was just down there um, talking to some of the folks who are conducting some of the uh, research that uh, we're engaged in now. Um, we have teams that are out on the river. They're taking samples. Uh, those samples are being tested. Uh, they're being analyzed, and they will uh, assist us in helping to uh, clean up uh, the entire um, river. Um, I think we all know that a river is much more than just a uh, just water. Uh, it is a resource uh, to support, uh, frankly, our life uh, here in the District of Columbia. That's uh, also why I am uh, I'm pleased to announce the formation of the uh, Leadership uh, Council for a Cleaner Anacostia uh, River. Uh, this council will be made up of government officials, governmental, uh, environmental, uh, uh, government officials, environmental advocates, as well as community leaders uh, who will work together to ensure that this project uh, continues to move forward. I want to thank uh, former Mayor Anthony Williams for agreeing to lend his support uh, by serving as the honorary chair uh, of the council. Um, before we, uh, I want to ask Doug Siglin to come up and speak on behalf of the Federal City Council, then followed by um, our director of DDOE, uh, uh, Keith Anderson. But before we do that, I'd like to ask our council members if they would like to come up uh, and say a few words. Um, why don't we begin with, we're, we're in Ward 8, right? Aren't we in Ward 8, Mr. Barry? Six. We're in six? Hard to know, man, when you're out on this water, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Well, since we're in sixth, I'm going to let uh, Councilmember Bonds uh, go first then, and then we'll have Councilmember Barry come up. Come on up, Council Members. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I was saying to um, the mayor, I said, as senior to senior, um, let's settle it. And so he and I will settle that issue, and we'll talk about that at another time. All right. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted you to, um, to know that um, this is a wonderful day. Not only do we have terrific weather, but I'm really excited to be here because the river is something that I grew up knowing a lot about. I'm a Southeast girl, um, grew up here in the District of Columbia, and um, every now and then my dad would bring my brothers and I down to the Anacostia River. And um, we always wanted to slush around in the water. And even then, uh, my mom would say, oh, that water is dirty. Can't you see? And so I'm, I'm happy to tell her today that we are kicking off this um, effort that is saying that the river is getting cleaner and that our environment, therefore, is getting cleaner. So that's a big deal for me. But I want to commend uh, Mayor Gray for so many things that he is doing to make the District of Columbia what I consider almost brand new. And um, when you look at the river, that's something you can see every day and you can feel the effects of it. I think it's a testament to his efforts to continue to move the ball forward on behalf of this great community. So please, let's give him a big round of applause. And as one of the newest members of the council, it's been my pleasure to be a partner with um, the mayor on many of the things that he has attempted to make realized here for the citizens of the District of Columbia. And I think the fight for cleaning up our environment is at the forefront of our interests. And I want to also commend um, 
uh, Chairman uh, Mendelson for understanding the sentiment on the council and getting all of us to vote unanimously in support of the sustainability legislation. So we'll give him a round of applause and my colleagues, including <laughs> Council Member Barry. As you can see, I prepared a few remarks, but I'm going to quit here while I'm ahead. And thank you all very, very much. And the reason I prepared the remarks is because throughout my uh, very brief um, career on the council, uh, Mayor Gray has always been gracious to any of us who uh, come out to events. And he's given us an opportunity to say hello. And so he's done it again today. And so I appreciate it very much. And thank you. And thanks to all of you who have been working very hard. And let's try to inform the city, the community, of these great resources that we have. And let's invite everyone down to be a part of what we're doing in the environmental um, community. And thank you. Good afternoon. Hello, DC. Hello, Ward 6. <laughs> Mr. When you're mayor, you sort of forget where these boundaries are. <laughs> when you're in the water, you can't tell. But let me uh, thank the mayor for inviting me. Let me say, I, earlier this year, I had a very serious illness, a blood infection that knocked me to my knees. A third of the people who get it don't come back. I want to thank God and prayers and good doctors and a good God for bringing me back. And I think that's important to know. That's why I have a difficulty walking because I had to learn how to walk again. If you never learn how to walk again, if you have not been able to walk, walking again is a blessing, isn't it? It's a blessing, isn't it? And a lot of muscles are going bomb at that. But let me just say that I have... Uh, been in Washington since 1965. I came here to run the SNCC office, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee office. And I had never been to Washington except to the March on Washington. And I came here to raise money, lobby the Congress. But I found all these problems, all these challenges here in the District of Columbia that I told the SNCC people, you all go do that. I'm going to do this. And I'm glad I told them that, too. And one of our first programs, I think I'm an early environmentalist, Vince. We had over 1,000 young men during the month of August, 1967, cleaning streets and alleys. Now, to me, that's an environmentalist, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? One of our programs was a rat patrol. Can you imagine people clamoring? To get on the rat patrol. We had a long line around the corner, Britt. They mean get on the rat patrol, rat patrol. They were out killing rats and and, and patting bait and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> so I, did, I give you this history because I have this philosophy. Uh, and this is Vince's press conference. I'm going to try to make it short. Uh, that if a lion continues to tell the story, he'll always be king of the jungle. So I'm going to tell my story. So people in Washington would know the history where we've come. But I want to commend the mayor. And I was mayor for 16 years. I know how hard it is. It's not easy. I have over 35,000 employees. Now a budget of $11 billion, B-I-L-L-I-O-N. You got people in far flung places. You spread out all over the city, down at Wasua and other places, and Vince, it is a tough job. You know that. But you've done it. You've done it. You and I have talked about that, uh, how, you, how you maintain your, your spirit and your, your drive in spite of difficulties. The thing that used to bother me the most, I'm sure it bothers you, for stuff to happen that you don't know anything about, that you have anything to do with. It doesn't bother you, <laughs> but you handle it. Vince and I have been friends over 35 years, 40 years, and he's a wonderful individual, got a big heart. Uh, his philosophy is, is rather close to mine, mine to his. So, Vince, I just love you, and I wish you well. You know, I got out of my sick bed to come campaign for you. That's how much I believe in you. 
Let's give the mayor a great round of applause. Come on, let's do better than that now. Come on. Come on, do better than that. Come on. Do better than that. And I just saw uh, Anita was here earlier. And I think I can't see that pose anyway. I see Mary Shea. She is to be commended. She and I battle now and then, philosophically, you know. I have one set of consistencies. She has another. But Mary Shea has been the leader on the council on the environment. She's guided us well. Uh, she's had hearing after hearing. She's invited input from all of us. So why don't we give Mary Shea a big round of applause. She, she really did. Thank you very much, Ben. And God bless all of you all. I'm looking forward to the day I can fish in the Anacostia, but more importantly, I can eat the fish that I catch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that is one of our goals, uh, Councilmember Barry, and that is to be able to uh, ensure that the river is, uh, as we said, uh, swimmable and fishable. And I know that sounds like a uh, distant goal or an unrealistic goal, uh, but we are going to make that. Uh, we've been joined by our uh, chairman of the uh, Committee on Transportation uh, and the Environment, uh, through whose committee uh, this bill uh, was shepherded. And I want to thank her for coming out today. I want to ask uh, Councilmember Che, who uh, Mr. Barry referenced, if she would come up and say a few words. I know she knows an awful lot about this legislation. Councilmember Che. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I am very delighted to be here today. This is such a, a, a wonderful day. And I have, I, I believe, a wonderful story. The story's not completed, but a, a wonderful story to tell you. First of all, the, I want to thank the mayor. The sustainable DC uh, plan that he put together has an important vision for all of us, for DC residents, everyone who comes here. And I, I want to thank him for his continuing commitment and all during the time of his mayorality uh, to the environment. And I want to thank also my fellow council members who are here uh, who have supported me when I've uh, put through legislation on the environment, and Mr. Keith Anderson, the head of the Department of the Environment, as well. All of us had made uh, you know, a great team, I think, in trying to uh, put all of this together. And the legislation that uh, is uh, you know, in front of us today wisely builds on some of the great laws that we've already had passed in the district, the Urban Forestry Preservation Act of 2002, the Green Building Act of 2006, the Clean and Affordable Energy Act of 2008, the Healthy Schools Act of 2010. Seems like we do things on the even years, I guess. Um, we have uh, all sorts of uh, important incentives in this bill as well, including credits for alternative fuel vehicles, and it, there are some big leaps forward with new policies, for example, requiring district employees to provide public transit benefits to their employees, banning the use of uh, polystyrene foam, yes, or styrofoam by food service businesses in the district. And with this bill, as well as the predecessors, Mayor Gray has demonstrated uh, a remarkable commitment to environmental health and sustainability. So it's a pleasure for me, of course, to be here. In terms of the story, a key piece of the Sustainable DC Omnibus Act that Mayor Gray signs today is designed to reduce the amount of significant and harmful litter in the Anacostia River, and in particular, as I said, the polystyrene foam. This is an important step along this road toward a healthy Anacostia that we started down the last few years. The Anacostia River and the wildlife that it supports are invaluable ecological features of the district. Unfortunately, since the early 17th century, when John Smith found Native Americans living on this spot, um, the river was teeming with fish, but since then we've been polluting the Anacostia until it's in the shape we're used to today, a river we can't swim in, we can't play in, a river whose fish were advised not to eat. Still, <laughs> over the last three, uh, several years, though, the district has begun taking uh, steps uh, to turn this around, to turn the tide, if you'll forgive the pun. Uh, Mayor Gray made the rehabilitation of the district's river a centerpiece in the sustainability DC plan and establishing a fishable, swimmable Anacostia by 2032, and I hope sooner. And we've begun to tackle some of the biggest problems, litter and stormwater runoff. With the Anacostia River Cleanup and Protection Act, 
affectionately known as the bag bill. Enacted in 2010, we redu drastically reduced the number of plastic bags in the Anacostia River. Now with the Sustainability DC Omnibus Amendment Act, styrofoam litter is on its way out too. In part due to the revenue from the bag bill, the bag fee, the five cents that we charge if you take a plastic bag, DDOE has been able to implement its fantastic River Smart Homes program, which encourages district property owners to adopt stormwater retention measures like green roofs, permeable pavement, and rain gardens. And in fact, in case you don't know, the district has led the nation in green roof installations for the last three years. We now have over two million square feet of green roofs across the city. Think about that. That's an applause line, I think. Thank you. And D.C.'s uh, stormwater regulations took effect in January were also a, a huge step in reducing the amount of polluted stormwater that runs uh, down the storm drains and into the rivers uh, as the district especially is continuing to develop, and that becomes quite important. And we've also taken other steps in recent years to reduce the amount of pollution uh, in the district and pollution activities and runoff into the rivers, uh, including runoff of fertilizer and the use of toxic pesticides and cleaning chemicals, just by way of example. And as I said, this is quite a story. The Human and Environmental Health Protection Act, which I introduced in the council passed in 2010, reduced the amount of phosphate allowed in dishwashing detergent sold in the district. Phosphates from dishwashing detergents stimulate the growth of algae in waterways, blocking sunlight and reducing the amount of oxygen um, and harming fish and other aquatic life. The Pesticide Education and Control Amendment Act, which I introduced in the council passed in 2012, restricted the use of pesticides near waterways. Many common pesticides are toxic to fish and aquatic organisms, and DDOE recently issued rules, uh, uh, Mr. Anderson, implementing that act, so thank you for that. The Mayor's first Sustainability DC Act, the Sustainable DC Act of 2013, restricted fertilizer use near waterways during rainfall and in the winter. Fertilizers contain phosphorus and nitrogen, which, like phosphates and dishwashing detergent, encourage overgrowth of algae and other aquatic life, suffocating uh, marine life. All of these laws are part of a mosaic that's coming now into picture for all of us so that we can begin to envision the Anacostia River as this wild, wonderful, robust waterway that we can fish in, we can swim in, and we can eat the fish, as Mayor Barry has mentioned. So I'm delighted to be here today. We do have uh, a distance to go. We're hardly there yet. But our next step is to clean out all of the toxic chemicals that uh, are underneath the water that have been lying there for years. And we're beginning to put together a plan Mr. Anderson may mention something about that. We're beginning to put together a plan, and we want to do so promptly, to remediate all of that in the bottom of the river, because unless that's gotten rid of, we won't get to where we need to go. But we're also on our way with respect to that. So um, I think it's a day of celebration. Again, I want to thank the mayor for his vision, and I want to thank everybody who's been a part of this. This is a great day for the Anacostia and for the District of Columbia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I thank everyone for coming out this afternoon. I must say it is uh, definitely a pleasure to be here today with the backdrop of one of our most important natural resources in the District of Columbia, the Anacostia River. It is even more exciting because today we are making great strides in practice and with policies to restore this river. I am certain by now all of you have read the Mayor's Sustainable, Sustainable DC Plan and fully understand that restoring this river is a top priority of this administration. The district has undertaken a restoration project, as you've heard, uh, uh, named the, for a cleaner Anacostia River initiative. Folks, what we are doing is taking samples from the riverbed and testing the sediments to determine how much pollution exists, where it exists, and where it came from. Once that phase of the project is complete, we will, we will then move on to the feasibility aspect of the remedial investigation and feasibility st study. This is where we will assess and determine which ways we can take to actually clean up the Anacostia River. Our initiative uh, will follow all applicable federal laws and guidelines pursuant to the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act of 1968. Folks, if anyone can say that three times fast, I have something for you. And through this process, we will work efficiently and, and, and obviously transparent, uh, transparently. 
And so, folks, for the remedial, invest remedial investigation and feasibility study, we look forward to having that process completed by the calendar year of 2015, which will then be followed by a record of decision, which will be entered into by June 30th of 2018. Every document that is a part of this process, ladies and gentlemen, will be available at ddoe.dc.gov forward slash Anacostia Sediments. Additionally, my team at DDOE will be available to meet regularly with community groups and residents interested in this effort. Our goal, our ultimate goal with the Four Cleaner for, with the Four Cleaner for Anacostia River initiative is to do everything possible to ensure that this river is once again fishable and swimmable for the folks of the District of Columbia. It can be done and it must be done, ladies and gentlemen. So I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank Team DDOE. Please give yourselves a round of applause. And I would also like to thank uh, our contractor, Tetra Tech, and more importantly, Jeremy Travis. Where's Jeremy? He may be out taking samples. There he is, for helping DDOE with this effort. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Sigland. I uh, work with uh, former Mayor Anthony Williams at the Federal City Council, and uh, there was a lot of information there, but you may have heard Mayor Gray say that um, the mayor is appointing a leadership council to keep an eye on the continuing cleanup of the Anacostia River, and they've asked former Mayor Williams to be the honorary chair of that leadership council. I found out late last night that uh, Mayor Williams would not be able to be here today. He asked me to fill in very briefly with a few seconds remarks. I did not have a bow tie. I'm sorry. I couldn't do that. But I did want to say that um, the narrative from my point of view as someone who's been working on this river now for 17 or 18 years is that Mayor Barry, Mayor Williams, Mayor Fenty, Mayor Gray have all had a vision for what this river could mean to the District of Columbia. And you've heard a whole series of progress of things that have been done since the days when Mayor Barry was in office. And Mayor Gray deserves tremendous credit for doing some really extraordinary things. The toxic things we're talking about, toxic cleanup, the bottom sediments, the styrofoam ban, and something that hasn't been talked about today is the District of Columbia is the number one city in America for getting its arms around stormwater runoff. It's great. And I was in a national meeting this morning where we had people from all over the nation listening into a webinar about how great the District of Columbia is doing on getting its arms around stormwater runoff. So Keith, your people who are here, Mayor Gray, congratulations on that. Let me just challenge you on one other thing though. Council members, Mayor, there's one piece that we need to finish up. And that piece is all this investment that we've put into the river to clean it up, to clean up the toxics, to clean up the trash, to clean up the stormwater, to clean up the sewage. All that investment is going to be worthwhile when we form a truly great urban park here along the Anacostia. And uh, please, that is an applause line. I think the city needs to work with our friends at the National Park Service to improve the city land, to improve the National Park Service land, so that someday soon, little children from Ward 8 and little children from Ward 3 can be down here at one of the world's great urban parks, playing in the water and playing on the land and working together for the benefit of the District of Columbia. Thank you very much. All right, who's got questions on the, uh, on the bill that we signed today? <laughs> I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> Mr. Seagraves. If somebody's carrying a gun and they throw it into the Anacostia River. <laughs> if, if, if that happens, you are, you are officially designated to jump in and get it, okay? <laughs> Could you or somebody explain to us how the transit subsidy component of this works, what uh, employers would be required, and how uh, commuters or uh, employers, employees would benefit from that? Um, medium to large size uh, businesses that have 20 employees or more would benefit from this transit subsidy. And so those are the businesses that would fall under that uh, segment of the act. So what does it mean to the employee? What would they see as a benefit? 
Uh, IRS uh, subsidized benefits for transit. That's is that's what they would see as a benefit on their through their pay. So, or they, I thought there was something about, or they had the employer has an option to either provide that or provide van pooling like that, or something along those lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, van pooling is one of the that's options. That's obviously a subsidy too. Okay. And so this would be a credit that they would get taken out of their paycheck free tax that they could use to pay for metro fare cars? That is correct. All right. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. This all comes in January 2016, all of these components? No, the styrofoam comes in in January 2016. The rest of it is uh, effective now, right? So, yeah. So the transit subsidies? It's effective with the bill being uh, adopted. The styrofoam, the styr, you know, polystyrene, um, that's twenty. That's January 2016. Yeah. yeah. Matt. Mr. Mayor, can you talk about uh, what if, if businesses don't comply with this styrofoam ban? Uh, what was that now? What if businesses don't comply with the styrofoam ban? I think there are fines that are imposed. Is that right, Keith? Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about it? Over the, over the next two years, it is our intention to work very closely with the businesses that are affected by the styrofoam bill, uh, education and outreach and how to comply with the law. Um, it has been our experience through outreach and education that businesses do and want to do the right thing. If you've noticed, there are several businesses in the, in the District of Columbia that are already com converting to compostable and recyclable materials. And so we do expect um, uh, a very good participation rate uh, when it comes to this bill, but the district stands ready to enforce the law if there are in, any bad actors. And so we will get you a more specificity on the enforcement actions uh, as we get closer to the effective date of 2016. Is there a fine? There will be a fine assessed for those who are uh, in non-compliance. But our first goal in any enforcement action is to bring the business or the responsible party into compliance with the law, uh, whether that be uh, with the bag bill or this law here. Our first step is the compliance. But uh, if need be, we will move uh, towards fines. Are you with the media? Yeah, I thought I was. Are you with the media, sir? Yes, sir. What, 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 I, I just don't know you. I'm just why I'm asking. Barrington Salmon Washington as well. I'm sorry. Barrington Salmon. Oh, Barry, I didn't even. God, man. I'm sorry with the hat and glasses on. Excuse me. <laughs> I was wondering if um, the new initiative you have, if it's, if it's um, piggybacking on the Anacostia Water Initiative, Water Fund Initiative, or if you guys started fresh. Well, I mean, we, we obviously are building on efforts that precede this. We're not starting all over again, even with the sustainable D.C. Uh, plan. Uh, we were trying to build on commitments uh, that had made, been made previously, and there are other mayors who have focused to a lesser or greater extent uh, on this issue. But in point of fact, a number of the things that we're doing, uh, in fact, um, are new. Uh, you heard the issue, the discussion that was uh, from Mr. Siglin about stormwater management. A lot of what we're doing with stormwater management is new uh, in the city. And frankly, when you think about, you know, what, what happens with, uh, you know, green roofs, that has a tremendous impact on uh, stormwater management and an impact on pollution uh, in the river because it's keeping uh, polluted water out of the uh, river because it's never reaching uh, the river as a result of the uh, green roofs uh, that we put in. You're welcome. Yes. Carry on. Can you tell us who you're with? Sure, the Washington Post. I'm okay. sorry, Mary Catherine Clarity. I'm okay. All right. Um, the carry on food services are what's affected by the dam, but what happens with phone trays at supermarkets? I can't hear you. Can, can you, can you uh, stand up and shout it out? Carry on food services are affected by this, but what happens with phone trays at supermarkets that are on the um, maybe you can be a little bit more specific because it was an amendment that dealt with, um, you know, the Safeway, for example, which had some concerns about the uh, the fact that they would have they're now exempted from this. But if there's something more specific than that, no, maybe. that's that's what I wanted to know. Who okay. Else is exempted? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Well, can you explain why the exemption for for Safeway and for the meat containers? You wanna, you wanna, it isn't just Safeway. Just safe. It is not just safe. That's what I thought. Yeah, so can yeah. you explain why the exemption? The, the exemption is for supermarkets that do on-site butchering. Uh, it is a health and safety concern, and styrofoam is probably is the best 
method to contain those meats that have been butchered on site. However, Safeway and other stores are not exempt from carry out uh, whatever food that they sell on premises that you carry out the door. They're not exempted from that, uh, from using styrofoam there. It's only for butchering on site. So that's what the exemption is about. So any butcher who butchers on site? Any, any grocery store that butchers on site will be able to use polystyrofoam. Because, folks, the reality of it is when you take your meat at home, meat home you throw that right in the, in the trash, or that could be recycled. Um, and what we're worried about is the food containers that somehow make it onto the street, into the, into the drains, into, and into the river. Uh, so the grocery stores will have the exemption if they butcher on site. Uh, and Safeway is one of those stores. Yep. So um, given that carryouts provide in a lot of cases food that is of low cost in a lot of respects, is there any concern on the impact on their bottom line and how they might have to pass on the cost to customers? Uh, we've done the analysis of what the costs are. I don't think that it would be significant. We have not conducted an analysis to the, at this point. However, we, we, we do know that compostable materials and recyclable materials are a bit more expensive. However, we are working with uh, the carryouts in certain stores for bulk purchasing agreements to drive down the cost of the compostable and recyclable materials. So between now and the effective date, we hope to ensure that this isn't an undue burden to the small mom and pop shops that are now having to convert to compostable and recyclable materials. Just the media, Carl. Okay. Just a quick follow up. Yeah. So you mentioned com com compostable um, containers, but the district doesn't have a commercial composting operation that I know of. Is there a plan to actually start doing that to provide it to businesses? No, but I'd be happy to talk to you about a plan and devising a plan if, if possible. But we, at this point, we do not have um, a plan to uh, produce compostable materials in, within the district, but I think that's an excellent idea. Right. Uh, we have uh, offered grants that have looked at that kind of business practice. So, you know, I would encourage everyone here and the folks watching at home to go to sustainabledc.org and get involved. Understand what we're doing here um, and so that you can become up to speed on the many initiatives that the mayor has uh, set forth in the Sustainable D.C. plan, that being one of them. For those who don't know, we did challenge grants. Uh, we've done two rounds of those now, uh, I guess, and, and the first round included a uh, composting um, project that helped us experiment with what we can do with composting, composting in the city. And um, I think the results have thus far have looked pretty good, and I think that will be something that will be expanded in the future uh, in the city. Any other uh, media questions on this issue? All right. Thank you all very much.